Hi, buenas noches. Buenas, buenas noches. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Okay, here we go. Hello, guys. How are you? Hey, hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. Okay, great. Okay, so how, how's the image? How's the image? Is that okay? Is that yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's okay. Yeah. You have some yeah. verbs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, great. Um, my name is Rafael Antonio Rodriguez. Well, Rafael Linares, the way they call me at the academy. I'll be your teacher for now. Um, so let, let's start the class. Uh, this is your fourth week. So that correct? You are on section four of intermediate one, right? What? Yeah. Section four, intermediate one. Um, no. Um. <laughs> Try this. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, this is where you are. Intermediate four. Inter yeah. Intermediate one, section four, right? Okay. Is that right? I hope so. Yeah, that's that's what I heard. This is section four of intermediate one. Okay. So don't worry, let's let's start with a quick exercise so you can get to know me really quick. So you can make any question, but using present perfect. You remember the perfect? Yes, I think that is a question that had you ever. Exactly. So so you can know about my experience, um, about if I am married or not, if I have any kids, who am I? So let's use present perfect, okay? You can start making me questions using uh, present perfect, okay? Only condition. Okay. Um, who will start? Whoever. Lenny. Uh, okay. Yeah. I start. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, have you ever married? Have you ever got married? Have you ever gotten married? Yeah. I, I have gotten married. Let's see. I have been married. I have been married for 12, 12 years already. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. Okay. And where are you from, teacher? Come again, come again, repeat. Where are you from? Where am I from? I'm actually in Houston, Texas right now. As we speak, I'm in Houston, Texas. Okay. Oh, my. Just kidding, I'm in Mexicano. <laughs> I'm Salvadorian, don't worry. <laughs> okay. 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 You can make... How you... Yeah, go ahead. Have you ever eaten Mexican food? Have you ever eaten? Have you ever uh -huh. eaten Mexican food? Yes, I love it. Tacos from the lips. <laughs> Delicious. Burrito. 
Girls are amazing, right, Enrique? Yes. Okay, very good. Come on, more questions, more questions. Okay. Uh, questions, how long, how often? Can you use that mm. with present perfect? Okay. How often do you visit the Salvador? How often do you visit El Salvador? Very often. I I've never I've never been out of El Salvador. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that you live in Houston. <laughs> that was a joke. No. It was oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I mean Mexicanos. I need to learn the difference of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> you need to learn to identify jokes. That's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kelvin, Richard, Veronica. Just listening. Come on. Just listening. Okay. You have to make one question. Come on. Do you want to know, don't you want to know about my experience as a teacher? I don't know. Oh. If I play the guitar. I think that we have a lot of questions, but uh, it is very difficult to make it in English. <laughs> the, po the whole point, try it. Okay. Um. And you want to know if I ever sang, if I ever sang before? Yeah, a little bit. It just make the exercise, but I don't practice. But you're good, you're trying, you're speaking. Richard, Pedro, Infante, no, no, Ramirez. Come on. Don't you want to know? Have you ever, have you practiced sports? Have you ever practiced sports? Yes, I, I practiced basketball when I was in high school. I played basketball when I was in high school. It's very good. Very good, excellent. Excellent, Richard. Veronica, Enrique Ortega. Kelvin, <laughs> come on, try it, guys. You need to talk. How long time do you be a teacher? Uh, good question. Good question. Now let's review the grammar. How long? And then okay. you have to How long have you been a teacher? How long have you have been? Have you been? Okay. How long have you been a teacher? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Look. Uh, so you have the third, let me see, you have the third form of the verb, see? You have be, was, where, and then you have been, right? The participle. So how long have okay. you been? I've been, I've been a teacher for six years. For six years, I taught, I have taught for INSAFOR for six years. I was an English manager at E4CC. And that was on 2017. I'm a trainer of teachers. Actually, I like to train teachers, develop them. You know, it's really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. More questions, questions, come on. <laughs> um, yeah. How do you ever visit uh, Europe? Europe. Uh, Europe. 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 Mm -hmm. I have never visited Europe. I have friends who live in Europe, actually. I have friends who live in Europe. They're really good. Okay, here. Oh, you play guitar. <laughs> Present perfect. Come on. Have you ever played guitar? Yeah. Have you ever played it? Play play yes. Play I, it. I have. I have played a guitar for what? For 24 years. 24 oh my years. My God, you're I, a master. No, no, I, I haven't, I haven't given, listen, I haven't given enough time 
to that, you know, to practice in, I haven't given enough time. Okay. Practicing in, uh, the guitar. So I have three kids, I'm married, 24 years playing the guitar. What's the logical question? What is the logical question? Come on, tell me. <laughs> One of the first questions you learned on basic one. How do I look old? Old. <laughs> Please have a little patience. <laughs> How old are you? Excellent. Who said it? How old are you? How old are you? Repeat. How old are you? How old are you? Uh, hey, I'm 38. I'm 38. 38. You, don't, you don't need to say, I'm 38 years old. No, just say, say the number, okay? I'm 38, okay? okay? Simple, guys. I learned, hey, listen, I learned English by myself since I was seven years old with a dictionary. So if you, you want to learn English, this, this is the key right there, vocabulary. That's the okay. base. Okay? And then practice, a lot of practice, practice, okay? Just give us that. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. You have to practice. That's it. Very simple. Okay, so we are 12. We are 12 participants already. Let's start with um, the part where you left over. Let's go to some four. I mean, second four here. So, the whole idea is for you to participate. Give me one second. Okay, so you have to practice. So I will select somebody. Delia Peraza. Okay, you can unmute your microphone, Delia. Okay, Delia. Hello, hello. Okay, no, Enrique. Um, oh, Delia, there you Okay, one, two, three, go. Practice asking and ask wearing question in English using the present perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect and simple. Fast. Um, sentence in the in this lesson english teacher joe sands explain when you simply pass um, uh -huh. i don't know <laughs> and the present perfect sentence mm -hmm. depending on the time from Time frame from, from on the action. Practice asking question in the present perfect using have you ever and describe your past experience by responding in both the present perfect and simple past. This lesson includes an English oral compression exercise. Woo, very good. And <laughs> Right. Nice try, Delia. Now, please repeat. Let's okay. go. Repeat. Answering. Um, Answering. Answering. Questions. 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 Very good. There you go. Then you said something. Oh, tenses. 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 Okay. I don't know when you said perfect. perfect. Perfect tense, depending on the time frame. Repeat, time frame. Time frames. Yeah, time frame. Time frame. Time frame. Time frame. There you go. Okay, action. 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 <laughs> Look. Action, 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 action. Action, 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 action. There you go, action. Again, action. practice. Practice. Questions. Question. Questions. Questions. 
Very good. There you go. And then experiences. 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 There you go. Da, 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 da. This includes in English around comprehension. 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 There you go. Okay, guys. Uh, the key for learning English is to practice and repeat, repeat, repeat. So let me give you a quick tip, really quick, okay? You glitch. Okay. Juglish. Juglish. <laughs> what is this? And you, you select US, okay? I will send you the link. This is very useful. So let's say you need to learn how to say comprehension, for example. You select the accent, US accent, and then you say, say it. This is an engine, is an engine that will look for videos with that pronunciation. Listen. Hair cells, and when those hair cells start to die, comprehension disappears. Okay, the comprehension, you heard? Basically Let's go with the next the one. There is pride that is just beyond our comprehension. One of my favorite Comprehension. There's infinite mind that is beyond human comprehension. He comprehension, one more. The anguish is palpable and beyond comprehension. You got it? So this will look for videos from YouTube and will give you the subtitles and the pronunciation problem, this type of, reading comprehension passage you could use of the word that you're looking for. For example, mm -hmm. schedule, okay, schedule. Schedule. Are over budget or behind schedule? Schedule. Four percent. Next. But some of these folks really want me to keep on schedule. Yes, please. Schedule and so on. Got it? So never stay with your teacher's accent. Just look for more pronunciation. You got it? Okay. Let's go with simple past versus present perfect. Thank you very much, Del Delia. That was amazing. Thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to watch this video. I know it's a little long, but let's take some of it. Vamos a practicar algo de él, okay? Algo de lo que sale en el video. It's very useful, okay? Remember the structure of the present perfect. If you're going to tell me about that, the restaurants that you've visited, you'll also learn how to express past experiences. For example, you'll be able to ask and answer the following question. Have you ever eaten exotic food? Before I present the structure that we'll learn in this class, I would like for you to listen to an audio program. This audio program illustrates how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully as I'll ask you questions about the audio program at the end. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Let me present the structure now. I would like to start by presenting this concept to you. The first thing is that we use the simple past for completed events at a definite time in the past. In other words, things that you did and have completed. And we use the present perfect for events within a time period up to the present time. In other words, events that you started in the past and those have continued to the present and they're not complete yet. Now, what we're going to learn in today's lesson is how the two are related. First of all, I may ask you a question, such as the one that you... 
Okay, let me pause the video right now. And let's talk about this for a minute. Um, so, can somebody explain me what's the difference between the simple past and the past perfect? I mean, the present perfect. Mm -hmm. Rodrigo. Hello. Okay, Rodrigo, go ahead. I don't know. You didn't know? Oh, I, oh, I, I saw you moving your mouth. So I thought <laughs> it went the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so guys, come on. When do we use the simple past? Uh, uh, Mr. King said that, uh, have you ever you use it for uh, meet someone person because you don't have uh, confianza. I don't know how to say it. Trust. Not trust. You don't trust. And, and uh, person perfect when you want to uh, long that conversation, alargar la conversación. To make a, to have a longer conversation. But, yeah, could be. But what's the difference? What is the simple past? What is the past simple? Okay, what is the past simple? And what is the, uh, uh, oh wait, uh, here. Okay, the participle, remember? The present perfect. So what is the difference? Okay. So, los voy a agarrar como si fuera primera vez que ven este tiempo gramatical. No se preocupen. Just keep it secret. Va a ser un secreto entre ustedes y yo, okay? Don't worry. Uh, vamos a hablar rápido. ¿Qué hace la diferencia entre el presente perfecto y el pasado simple, no? Uh, decía José, completed actions in the past. El pasado es el pasado, ¿verdad? Lenin, como decía José. Yes. Ya lo pasado, pasado. ¿Ya? Once, solo ocurrió una vez. Ok, once. Una vez. And that's it. Ese es el pasado simple. Una acción completada en el pasado. That's it. You died. She died. It's gone. Ya pasó. I fell. I fell. Me caí. Ok. I liked them. Van a decir por ahí. I liked. Oops. Them. Talking about food, right? I like them. Snails, talking about snails. Hey, what's snails? What are snails? Caracoles. Caracoles. What is lamb? Lamb. Somebody? Cordero. Cordero. Very good. There you go, guys. You see, you know English. Ya saben inglés, me Okay. Good. Now, talking about, talking about uh, present perfect. Vamos a hablar del presente perfecto. Y le pueden ver esta onda que me llega mucho. Um, Find it really quick. Here it is. Okay, I just got it. No sé por qué la pantalla se me pone así cuando estoy compartiendo algo y abro otra imagen. But anyways, let's go. Take a look at this. Miren esto. Okay. Tenemos the present perfect tense. Okay. So, structure. Structure. Very simple. Affirmative, negative, interrogative, and short answers. So, Y esto es lo que verán en este video, ¿no? La estructura. Hablemos de la estructura súper rápido. Recordando, esto lo vieron en la unidad 1 de intermedio 1. So, you have a pronoun, a subject, really quick. Uh, somebody, can somebody give me a pronoun? You. You, right, okay. When you use you, do you use have or has? Has. Uh, no, have. have. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, have. When have. she and he. <laughs> okay. And then you have the past participle of the verb. El pasado participio, tío. Empezás a pensar como en español, ¿no? Como español. Entonces, venís y decís vosotros, ¿no? Let's see. Uh, le leer, leí. Ajá. Uh -huh. Vamos, español. Leer, leí. Leeré, 
Le Leíste. Leído. Leído. Ok. Um, escribir. ¿Pasado? Escribí. Escribí. Y luego, escrito. No se dice escribido. Cuidado. Vale. A ver, Enrique. Cocinar. Ajá. ¿Pasado? Exacto, le leí los labios. Cociné. Cociné, perfecto. ¿El pasado participio? Ahí es donde tienen Cocinar. que pensar. No, tienen que... tienen que pensar como españoles. Pues hombre, tío, que yo he cocinado. Tú has cocinado, él ha cocinado. Y el verbo haber, el verbo haber, ¿ya? Ajá. He cocinado, he hablado. Hablar, hablé, hablado. Saltar, salté. Saltado. Saltado. ¿Sí? Ok. That's the participle. Ese es el participio. Es bueno que se ubique en su contexto, en su idioma natal. Digámoslo uh -huh. para, para ubicarnos, ¿no? Estamos hablando. Yo he, yo no he, tú has, has tú. Uh -huh. ¿Ya? ¿Has tú hablado inglés? Have you ever spoken English? Have you spoken English, sería. Have you spoken English? So, moving with subject, you have spoken. I have done my homework. Okay, do, did, done. Do, did, done. Third form. Okay, now negative, y eso es una clave, si no se los han dicho hasta ahorita, el 90% de las estructuras gramaticales eh, tienen auxiliar que está en el positivo, en el negativo. Un segundo. Eh, es importante que identifiquen el auxiliar para dos cosas. Número uno, saber en qué tiempo estoy hablando. Y número dos, saber a quién le voy a agregar la negación, el not. Si aún no has entendido eso, es muy importante que lo sepas. ¿Cuál es el auxiliar del tiempo que vas a ocupar? A ese le agregas el not. Ese traes al principio de la oración para hacer una pregunta. ¿Ya? O antes de ese vas a agregar la WH para hacer una pregunta más específica, abierta. ¿Ok? You got it. Preguntas en cuanto a esto, en cuanto a la estructura. Questions, questions. No. Hable ahora, ok, para siempre. <risa> Ok, vamos a hacer un examen corto y que no lo pase. Opa. Come on, guys. <laughs> questions, questions. No? All clear? All clear? Clear? Ok, let's go. Let's go with the use. Vamos a hablar del uso. Y el uso que está hablando José ahorita. The use uh, that we have to practice right now. Actions that still continue. Actions that still continue. He has worked as a doctor since 2005. He has worked as a doctor since 2005. Okay, Kelvin, Efraín, can you translate? Can you translate, please, Kelvin? He has worked as a doctor since 2005. No. Just translate. Translate to Spanish. What do you understand? Uh, he él, has worked. Él ha trabajado como un doctor uh, hasta 2005. Okay, close. Desde. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Nice try. Kelvin, so, hey guys, since, okay? We don't since. say, yeah, we don't say signs, signs. We say since. Since. Yeah. Since. Since. So that, that's the use that we have to study right now. Actions that still continue. Él ha trabajado como doctor desde 2005, o sea que aún está trabajando. Yeah. Diferente sería si yo quito el auxiliar acá, has, y dijese, he worked as a doctor okay, since 2005. Él trabajó como doctor desde el 2005, aún puedo decir desde. 
pero al no poner el ha trabajado, estoy dando a entender que ya no. Entonces, eso es pasado simple. That's the difference. ¿Ok? ¿Got it? Ok. Good. There are three more uses. So, you have recently finished actions. I have cut my finger. I've cut my finger. Siempre traten de contractuar. Eso es muy importante. ¿Ok? I've cut my finger. I've cut my finger. ¿Ok? Experiences. He has tried rock climbing. I've tried playing the guitar. I've tried playing the guitar. Experiences. Actions which happened at an specific, an specified time in the past. Una acción o acciones que ocurrieron en un punto no específico en el pasado. Adam has bought a new mobile phone. Y ahí no importa lo que pasó. O sea, cuándo pasó, sino lo que ocurrió. Adam ha comprado un nuevo teléfono. ¿Cuándo lo compró? No importa, por eso es presente perfecto. ¿okay? Luego verán adverbios. ¿okay? Ahí les voy a enviar esta imagen ahorita al chat para que ustedes puedan estudiarla. Está en chido. Me, me gusta mucho esta imagen. Adverbs. Just. I've just eaten. ¿Ok? Si digo, I have eaten, Pedro Ramírez, ¿qué estaría diciendo? I have eaten. Estoy comiendo. Uh -huh, casi. I have eaten. Diría estoy, diría estoy comiendo con el just, ¿verdad? No, no, no. No, de hecho, uh, no. I have just eaten. I have just eaten sería... Yo acabo de comer. O ya comí. Acabo de comer. Ajá. Ok. Y en cambio si le quito el just. Estaría diciendo. I have eaten. Yo he, yo he comido. Comí. Ah, ok. Ok. okay. okay. Sí, aquí el have no es tener. Aquí es e o as. Ok. Eh, veamos. Verónica Hernández. So far. I have eaten sushi. Three times so far. Okay. Let's give it a try. Tratemos, tratemos, intentemos. No tengan miedo. Hasta aquí yo he comido sushi por tres tiempos. No. Yo he comido sushi por tres tiempos hasta aquí. No. Ok, mucha, hasta ahora. Hasta ahora. Ok, very good. Ajá. Yo he comido sushi tres veces hasta ahora. Very hasta good. Ahora. Muy bien. Ok. Luego en preguntas, solo en preguntas puedo ocupar ever. Have you ever eaten sushi? Rodrigo. Sí, nunca he comido sushi. Ajá. ¿Alguna vez o oh, nunca has comido sushi? No, nunca sería haven't you ever. Haven't you ever? Or have, have you never? Have you never? Or haven't you ever eaten sushi? Nunca Así sería. Okay. Nunca has comido sería, sushi. Sería, sería alguna vez has comido sushi. There you go. Correcto. Ahí viene la negativa, Rodrigo. Very good. I have never eaten sushi. Never. I have never eaten sushi. Nunca he comido sushi. I have already eaten. Estoy muy ocupado y I have already eaten. Más, más contractuado, I've already. I've already eaten. I've already sí. eaten. Este era una pregunta. Sí, Calvin. El, yo a veces, a veces lo que, por ejemplo, en el video que pasó anteriormente, lo que a veces yo me cuesta es que el, el, los ingleses hablan bien rápido. Y a veces para distinguir lo que usted dice, las contracciones, ¿cómo distinguir eso cuando ellos hacen contracciones? Esa es la, la pregunta. Ah, ok. Perfecta observación. Ahora, una observación de esa observación. Eh, los ingleses no contractúan y ese es el gran problema. Y, y articulan demasiado lo que dicen. Entonces, ahí es donde te perdés. Y hablando de ingleses de Inglaterra, los americanos, los eh, Um, estadounidenses, sí, muchos hablan con muchas contracciones, verbos frasales, idioms, de todo, ¿no? 
pues lo que te va a indicar que alguien está contractuando, eh, ¿qué se me hizo? Se fue. <ríe> no, Kelvin, por ahí está, ok. Lo que te va a indicar, si es presente perfecto, lo que está ocupando esa persona es el verbo en pasado participio. Ok. Si te dice alguien, uh, preguntas, hey, ¿y Pedro? Hey, Pedro, ¿verdad? ¿dónde está Pedro? Entonces tú, tú decís, ah, que okay, tú quieres contestarle al grupo y le decís, ah, he's gone. ¿Ves? No estás diciendo, él está ido. <ríe> Tiene sentido, pero no, no estaría diciendo, él, he is gone. ¿Ok? Está diciendo, he has gone. La contracción es, he is gone. Ok, vamos a hablar de Earth, Wind and Fire. She's gone. She's gone. Oh, what? Si la identificaste, Kelvin, sobre mi grupo. Okay. Earth, Wind and Fire, ¿no? Los 70, no, nadie. Ok, muy bien. Uh, veamos. Eh, ya vamos. You've said that before. Ok. Y sigo hablando en presente perfecto. You've said that before. Lo que me identifica que estoy hablando de presente perfecto es el uso del verbo en pasado participio. Ok, you've said that before. A veces ni se escucha, Kelvin, el you've, 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 uh -huh, so you've said that before, you've said that before. Ok. Uh, yo, le, yo le comento porque yo he ido, yo he ido a Estados Unidos y en algunas ocasiones la verdad que no he entendido ni, ni lo que dicen con la misma rapidez. Entonces, eso es lo que a mí me ha motivado a estudiar, como te digo. Pero esa situación que allá no se entiende a veces lo que, por ejemplo, usted lo pronuncia despacio y se entiende. Pero ya cuando se está allá es otra cosa la forma como se habla. Y yes. Pero lo que le va a ayudar va a ser la vida, Kelvin. Es lo único que le puedo decir. Ya al estar en un, en un ambiente inmerso en el inglés, Kelvin... Solo hablarlo, soltarse, perder la pena de decirle a alguien que ya es nativo o habla inglés, hey, mira, no te entendí eso. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Y son frases que ustedes deben de practicar. Las frases más comunes, ¿no? En lugar de decir, how are you? Que supongo alguien más me puede decir cómo más puedo saludar. Uh -huh. How are you doing? De hecho, un americano no dice, how are you? How are you doing todavía? Es como preguntarle a alguien que está de luto, de duelo, ¿cómo está llevando la cosa? O estaba quebrado, no tenía dinero y tú lo supiste y llegas y le decís, hey, how are you doing? ¿Cómo estás en el sentido de cómo estás sobrellevando esa situación? Lo común para un americano, esto viene de los 70 y lo mantienen ellos y no me crean a mí, vean películas viejas. Uh, hey, what's up? Casi, eso es bien común, pero bien calle, ¿no? <ríe> ok, how's it going? ¿Oye? How's it going? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Not bad. Lo más común es contestar. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. I'm doing good. Y tan fácil como es. How's it going? Eso es lo más natural que vas a encontrar, ¿ok? So, let's move on. Repitiendo, I've, I've, you've, she's, contracciones, very important. Y lo que te va a decir que estás usando presente perfecto es el verbo en pasado participio. Ok, so, simple past, completed actions, present perfect, still continues until now. Ok, I've worked as a teacher for a long time. Prepositions, since. Ok. Oh, I'm sorry. Yet. En negativo más que todo. I haven't eaten yet. I haven't eaten yet. Um, have you seen Avengers Endgame? No, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Aún no le he visto. Ok. Aún. Yet. Ok. Prepositions. Since and for. Very used, muy utilizadas, very used. From a starting point in the past. I haven't eaten sushi since last year. 
no he comido sushi desde el año pasado. ¿Ok? I haven't eaten sushi for three years. Por tres años no he comido sushi. No sé desde cuándo, o sea, se entiende que fue desde el 2017. Pero igual que en el español, lo digo por o digo desde. ¿Ok? Questions. Questions. ¿No? <laughs> ok, just remember, remember, regular verbs, irregular verbs. So, regular verbs, you just add ed. Ok, you just add ed. Irregular verbs change completely. Ok, they change completely. Una pregunta muy seria, ¿ustedes tienen listado de verbos? No. No? Oh, really? Ok. Les voy a enviar esto, ok? Ahorita que terminemos la clase o si no a las 10 en punto, se las envío cuando termine la segunda clase que viene luego de esta, ok? So, you have the infinitive irregular verbs, ok? El listado empieza con los irregulares y más abajo van a encontrar los verbos regulares, regular verbs. Muy importante, y esto les voy a ayudar a cubrirlo mañana, cómo se pronuncian los verbos regulares cuando terminan en ED. Hay tres sonidos esenciales que aprender. Alguien que me diga si ya vieron esto en tres, dos, uno. No. No. Ok. Bien, ED endings. Esto les va a ayudar. Eh, búsquenlo, es muy importante. Los verbos regulares terminan todos en ED. Ok, hay reglas para agregarle la ED a un verbo, pero es bien sencillo. Y son tres pronunciaciones bien, um, o sea, se tienen que aprender esas tres, tres pronunciaciones, ok. Id, la segunda es t, t, y la tercera es d, d. Ok, so for example, you can say acted, added, aided, arrested, assisted. Or you can say addressed, addressed, okay? Advertised, amused, asked, 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 okay? Asked. And then you have agreed, annoyed, answered, answered, not answered, ni answered, no, answered, answered, okay? arrived, arrived, and so on. Eso está en la parte de verbos eh, um, regulares y cómo se pronuncia cada uno de ellos, ¿ok? Irregular verbs, they change completely, guys. So you have lost, 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 ¿ok? Lie, lay, lane, and so on. Let, let, let. <laughs> A veces no cambian para nada. Hit, hit, hit. And so on. Ya les voy a enviar este listado y el de verbos comunes. Son dos listados que creo conveniente que los tengan a la par. Y aprender inglés es de lo más fácil. Lo que tienen que hacer es cada, cada regla gramatical, cada estructura nueva que vayan viendo, agarrar un cuaderno y empezar a repetir, repetir todos los días. Positivo, negativo, pregunta en su cuaderno. Agarren un verbo nuevo, otro sujeto y empiecen. Positivo, negativo, pregunta. Positivo, negativo, pregunta. Hagan ese ejercicio de tres a cinco veces todos los días. Sí, repetirlo solamente tres veces y luego hablar, hablar, hablar frente al espejo si se puede y eso les va a ayudar a ir a que su cerebro absorba la estructura nueva porque es lo que estás haciendo, diciéndole al cerebro ahí mira, hay otra manera de decir las cosas ahora ya no, ya no decís eh, ya no le decís a la bicha, va, Lenin me gusta, solo le decís you like me right? Oh, le cambió. right, so I, es tu cerebro tiene que entender que hay otra forma de decir las cosas, ¿sí? Y entonces está volviendo a cuando estabas pequeño y agarrando las palabras. Es lo mismo. Entonces no te frustres. Ese consejo sí se lo voy a dar. No se frustren. Al contrario, frustrense cuando digan, no hice nada hoy por aprender inglés. No dediqué una hora a aprender inglés hoy. Ahí sí digan, malo. ¿Sí? <ríe> ok. Questions. No questions. We still have the video uh, from... Unit four. So let's continue with that. Let's finish that to remember the structure. Okay. Please pay attention. 
I will ask you for some examples at the end, okay? You see on the example, have you ever eaten snails? And your answer may be, yes, I have. And when you continue to give more information about your answer, you're going to use the simple past and you're not going to use the present perfect to continue on giving more information because typically what you want to do is you want to express an experience that you had last week about that particular question, right? Such as the example that we see there. Yes, I have. I tried them last month. And I want you to notice the question towards the bottom. It's no longer in the present perfect, but it is now in the simple past. And that's because we're asking questions about our um, past experience. We're no longer asking questions about um, if you've ever eaten snails. Now the question is related to uh, the example that you see there. I tried him last month. And the next questions will be related to that event. And so the answer to that is yes, I did. And then you give more information. They were delicious. And so we do the same thing uh, towards the left, towards, towards the right side of the example of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? We start off the question using the present perfect. And then you continue on and, and you give either a positive or a negative answer. And then in this case, it happens to be a negative answer. No, I haven't. Um, and then you might give more information, but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night, right? Um, and then the next questions that are followed here are in the simple past. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends. Okay, bien. Necesito que alguien me diga, mire, teacher, yo no le entiendo a eso, o sí estoy entendiendo por completo. Lo que ha dicho es esto y esto y esto. Sin pena, chicos. Por favor. I'm all ears. I'm all ears. Repeat. I'm all ears. I'm all ears. Soy todo oídos. I'm all ears. O sea, les escucho. I'm all ears. Kelvin. <laughs> Can hear you. <laughs> the picture is not clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The picture is not clear. Okay, so have you ever eaten snails? La pregunta está en presente perfecto, ¿no? ¿Has comido uh, ¿qué era? caracoles? Algún... Sí. Okay, yes, I have. La respuesta. Va, como es una pregunta cerrada, ¿no? Have you ever. Las preguntas cerradas empiezan por el auxiliar. ¿Ok? La respuesta va a ser cerrada. Sí o no. Yes, I have. Usualmente agregamos más. ¿Has comido uh, caracoles alguna vez? Sí. Los probé el mes pasado. I tried them last month. Y ya sigue la conversación en relación a lo mismo. ¿Sí? A menos de que estés hablando con un loco, te va a decir, ¿y fuiste a jugar fútbol la semana pasada? Y, y ajá, no tiene, sí, sí se entiende, continúas la conversación con lo que te estás diciendo, no salís con otra cosa, ¿no? Entonces, va a ser relacionado, dice José, y eso es cierto. I tried them last month, so en base a eso va a seguir la conversación, va a fluir la conversación. Did you like them? ¿Te gustaron? Yes, I did. Otra vez, una pregunta cerrada que empieza con el auxiliar. Did you like them? Yes, I did. Sí, solo está diciendo sí. They were delicious. Todavía das un poco más de opinión. They were delicious. Ok, lo mismo con el segundo extremo, ¿no? Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Es una pregunta cerrada o una abierta, Kelvin. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Abierta. Mm -hmm. Cerrada. Ok, casi David. Gracias David por, por participar. Have you ever? Recuerden, cerrada empieza con el auxiliar del tiempo que estoy ocupando. En este caso, presente perfecto o, o pasado simple, ¿no? Una pregunta abierta, David, empieza con WH. Ok. Good. So, have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Cerrada. Sí o no. 
No, I haven't. No. Tan simple como decir no. Y puedo dar mi opinión aún. But I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. Pero comí en un restaurante Thai anoche. ¿Ok? Sigue fluyendo la conversación en relación a lo que me agregaron ahí. De que comí en un restaurante thai, tailandés, digamos, eh, anoche. Did you go alone? Did you go alone? ¿Fuiste vos solo? No, I went with some friends. ¿Ok? Ya me puedo extender. Y la conversación fluye. Ahora, quiero que ustedes sean lógicos y me digan qué pregunta hubiesen hecho después de They were delicious. Y después de I went with some friends. ¿Ok? Si ustedes estuvieran en esa conversación, ¿qué pregunta hubiesen hecho luego? ¿Cómo hubiesen seguido con la conversación? ¿Te gustaría regresar nuevamente? Ok. Me movía un... ¿Qué tiempo gramatical es ese? ¿Te gustaría regresar nuevamente? Estamos hablando en español. Yo lo que quiero es que se ubiquen. ¿Te gustaría regresar nuevamente? Futuro. Futuro. ¿Te gustaría? Richard. ¿No? ¿Te gustaría? ¿No? Ok, ese no es un tiempo gramatical, eso es una probabilidad. Estamos hablando de condiciones, condicionantes. ¿Te gustaría? Día, día. Ok. ¿Te gustaría? Would you like? Perfect. Y ahí vienen ya los modales. No sé si ya lo vieron. Ok. Would you like to go back? ¿Te gustaría regresar? Very good. Entonces, muy importante ¿eh? ubicarse en el tiempo gramatical que están utilizando. A este punto todavía pueden regresar al, a, su, a su idioma, volver al español y, y pensar, me gustaría, he hablado, hmm, me ha gustado, estoy hablando presente perfecto. O sea, ubíquense en eso, son 12 tiempos y los condicionantes, tan, solo como, tan simple como eso, ¿ok? Vamos a seguir mañana, le voy a dedicar un poco de tiempo a eso a agarrar la estructura del presente perfecto en comparación con el pasado simple. Y número dos, los ED endings, ¿ok? Ahorita les voy a enviar, todavía tengo cinco minutos, les voy a enviar eh, lo que les prometí, la imagen, el listado de verbos, ¿ok? Para que lo estudien. Ok, chicos, vamos. Ánimo, ¿eh? Tenemos esta semana para... Yes, ¿Ok? Good guys. I'll see you tomorrow. ¿Ok? Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.